it is time once again for an early and new edition of the Unbiased UFO Report. Let's bring in the fedora-wearing John Hudson. Thank you to Mr. John Fedora Hudson, otherwise known as UFO's version of Barry Gibb, coming on in here to talk about the latest and greatest in the UFO world. Happy New Year, John. How you doing, man? Happy New Year to you too, sir. And then, sorry, I'm just going to button saying my list here, but uh, hold on one second here. Uh, I'll send it to you in one second here. Uh, yeah, but Happy New Year to you all, and uh, I'm glad you guys are doing well. And, and uh, wow, was that one hell of a show. It was interesting. Very interesting. I mean, I mean, it's just, you know, it's hard to dismiss or it's, pardon me, it's easy to dismiss, John, someone who has experiences like our, our guest tonight did. But it's, it's another thing to kind of be aware that we haven't stepped in her shoes. We haven't stood in her shoes to know what is going on and it's uh it's well a tough i mean dave dave e- 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 even to be in her situation let, let's completely remove any consideration of the reality of any of it but just to be a person a human who believes in reality that everything that was happening to you imagine how most people would handle it she handled it very very well Add to the fact that she's only 21. That's what scares me about her her story, is that she's only 21, and this is something that I don't know if I would be ready at 21 for something like this. I, Dave, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I agree, man. You know, like, um, you know, she, 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 she said one thing that really caught my attention. Uh, and that was, she, she used the term old soul. And, you know, there are, um, there are, there are a lot of us in the world that um, have been labeled that way. And um, I, I, I used to get labeled that way so often that I finally got frustrated and angry about it. And I would start challenging people. I would challenge strangers, like, what do you mean? explain this to me right like like i got kind of nasty about it because i got so irritated by it and it happens to a lot of us right now does that really mean anything who knows but what it typically correlates to is is, is a type of demeanor and a type of presence and a type of vocabulary and a type of 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 um native um awareness and comfort in their own skin and and now is that some sign of something otherworldly I have no idea. Could it just be a common personality type that crosses a lot of us? I, I, I couldn't tell you, but, um, but I can say that, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, hell Dave, when I was, when I was 17 or 18, I was flown to New York to speak at the world forum on drug control. So, you know, you can see how, you know, this stuff works out. So it, it's kind of crazy how this stuff plays out, but yeah, young people do have, a brilliant amount of intelligence and for me personally like all the many of the crazy hypotheses that i had when i was you know in my late teens and 20s um it's the ones that i didn't tell anyone about that came true right i mean it's like and 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 like you find you you you're often in the end more right than wrong and so you know so it's not to say that that the, the, the ideas she has now are going to be vastly different when she's 40 she's just going to hone them she's just going to refine them she's going to throw out the ones that didn't work out she's going to keep the ones that did she's going to add to that she's going to get more depth and so forth but many of the core ideas that many of us have that we end up you know pursuing through life are actually ideas that came to us when we were in our teens and 20s i hear you there I just don't know. You know, it's one thing to prepare for life on earth, but when you have to deal with a lot of these programs, you know, and we don't, and look, a lot of these programs, we don't know if the ETs have put them in our heads or whether or not they've been put into our heads by other programs, but this young lady has gone through a lot. 
Well, a here's, lot. here's the question you have to ask, right? Because because everything has to be based on motivation and 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 predicted outcome, and and that would be that, like, if if I was going to insert uh, anything into someone's memory, um, I, I I wouldn't insert that. My lord, you know, I mean, it's like what kind of a horrible nightmare are you possibly trying to in, inflict on these people? You know, I, like I would insert like you know happy dancing rainbows and like sugar canes and like all that kind of thing like like why would you do that well one either you're not masking it and there's a reality to it or two i hate to even go here but the reality is worse <laughs> and this was a better answer right so i mean you know there's a lot of risk to how that stuff plays out holy cow y yeah you're absolutely right absolutely right and uh um, sorry, I'm a little Dan uh, W. Wow, thank you. Whew, a little cut off breath there for a quick second. John, what do you got for us for the unbiased UFO report as we take the turn into the brand new year? I mean, there's a lot of really cool stories that may be coming up here very, very soon, my friend. Yes, and I actually I just finally sent you uh, uh, sent you a, a, a list of things, and and honestly, like it was difficult because I mean, you know, to a certain degree, um, you know, things did slow down a little bit, right? And rightly so. I mean, you know, hopefully people they are enjoying the holidays to. and 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 you know and, and so forth, right? But um, but yeah, boy, there are some there are some pretty um, there are some pretty uh, there are some pretty crazy stories tracking, and you know, and a lot of them are, are young enough that you know you don't really know. Uh, you know how much effort you should get into it. So, um, so I did my best to pick what I hoped was interesting, and and uh, and if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll cover the other things later this week. Um, and so, um, you know, the, the first thing that I, that I just, you know, I think um, most people aren't really reading as much into as they should, is is this uh, change with um, the um, uh, House um, senior member of the uh, Intelligence Service Committee. Um, basically, uh, Devin Nunes is stepping down. Um, he is stepping down from government. Uh, he is becoming CEO of Trump's new media empire. And so he will no longer be in that role. And so a new gentleman named U.S. Representative Mike Turner um, has, and I, I can read this to you if you want, uh, U.S. Mike Turner's, uh, U.S. Mike Turner's appointment is ranking member of House Parliament Select Committee on Intelligence gives the right Patterson Air Force Base and its key mission, the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, or NASIC, a stronger stronger advocate in Congress, the representative said. So Mr. Mike Turner is a representative for Wright Patterson Air Force Base. How convenient. He goes on to say that this places me in the top eight out of 535 members of both the Senate and the House for security clearances. The Daytona Republican continued to say that this gives me access to both agencies and information that could help me in my advocacy for Wright Patterson Air Force Base. So. It, it, hold on a second here. It <laughs> is amazing that it's Wright Pat. Yes. Because in UFO history, Wright Patterson has played a massive role in what we believe happened with a lot of crashed retrievals from Roswell to Kecksburg, as well as others. Keisha? And Keisha chasing down, you know, the, the, the aliens in the building. You know, I mean, look, I, I don't know how big Wright Patterson Air Force Base is. I've never been there. But I do know this, that it is one of the top, most top secret Air Force bases in the United States and in the world. It's almost as secretive, even though it's well known, as what they do at Area 51. So the fact that they are going to be shifting this program over to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base makes a well, lot of sense well it, it doesn't mean that any program is being shifted all it means is that basically now the the a, a very senior level person in in the gang of eight essentially before the, the the person who held this role was a representative from california now we have a ton of military in california people don't realize that and that's the reason why we often have military leadership 
coming out of California because of the amount of, of stuff that gets made here, right? But he's the one stepping down. The guy that's taking his place just happens to be the representative for the region of the country of that course. where Wright Patterson Air Force Base sits, right? So this now becomes an interesting thing because from one point of view, you could see this as, well, wait a second. If this guy's a gang of eight and there are people that at right uh, at, 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 that basically don't want disclosure to happen, do they now have an inside member that's going to gum thumbs up, gum things up for us, right? Or is it the flip side, right? Is it the flip side that we now have someone in Congress who is an advocate for disclosure at some level? who happens to also have a relationship with Wright Patterson and therefore in this role can exert influence or at least negotiate, um, you know, um, uh, you know, relationships with them that might help with disclosure. No way to know, but we now have a player in play that could have a, a, a very positive or a negative impact, much more so than his predecessor. That's very conspiratorial to think of, John. Very well, much not like you. Not like I'm actually quite impressed with this, and you know, I mean, for people who may not know who this group of eight is, explain the knowledge behind this group of eight. Okay, so basically, um, you know, the gang of eight, or you know, they'll have, have different names. It's basically the the eight members of both co of both the House and the Senate, so of all of Congress. These are the eight members of both houses who hold the top positions for all the military leadership roles in Congress. And so as a result, they all have the top level clearance available for someone in Congress. They all essentially have at least the, the who, at least whoever leads the chairman of the group of eight has definitely. And you could argue all members have essentially blanket access to anything they want. At, at least that's what I've been told. I, I, I honestly, I have tremendous trouble believing that, but I have been told that on very good authority by multiple people in positions that would know that they have the power. Now, the, now where people get out of it is that they have to know what to ask for. Right. And that's where this whole plausible deniability. Don't say what you don't know sort of thing comes into it because if they can keep the keywords from ever being found out, then the gang of eight can't ask about it either because they don't know the, they don't know the right keyword. Right. So it doesn't mean that it's keeping people, you know, all out. But, you know, you can see how it plays out. Yeah. And the gang of eight is basically the most powerful unit within Congress that, that handles all this military stuff. John, right before the break, you were telling us about this group of eight that really control the military bases and, and what goes on. You know, one of the big questions that I had, you know, when over the last couple of weeks when we've seen the battle between the Pentagon and the elected officials regarding UFOs and how they're going to be studied. The one thing that I noticed was that the Pentagon really didn't appreciate the elected officials wanting updates and try and keep this story quite private. Are we going to see more privacy due to this move? Uh, well, I think we're going to see, I, well, I, 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 I don't think we should ever, well, that's not true. I, I, I think it's unlikely we should ever expect the government to become like overly aggressive about sharing information. I think it's always going to be a tug of war. You know, they're always going to be pushing back. They're always because I mean, essentially for them, data is you know essentially you know currency for them. You know, very true. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's hard to say how they play it out. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. move on here because. Obviously, last week we learned about the passing of former Nevada Senator Harry Reid, which was a shock to many of us. And we ended up doing a, a show on, on the legendary Harry Reid and his role in ufology and being a big believer in the phenomena that is going on. You know, is there any more news coming out of, of the circuit of Harry Reid regarding UFOs? Well, what, what's coming out, and because so, like for me, and I, I, I think there was other people like me in this position. A lot of us really weren't weren't sure how this was going to play out because, you know, if you know, it could be that that essentially, as as everyone talks about Reed's legacy, um, all the UFO stuff gets cut out of it because they don't want to tarnish his his reputation. Instead, what's happening is the opposite. 
you're seeing follow-up articles being written about Reed and about the UFO topic and being done in very positive light and in very optimistic light. And you even have a case of uh, the nice op-ed that, that Reed did in June being uh, re-spun up and re-sent out um, as, as kind of a, you know, a way of, of, of people kind of doubling down saying, look, this is what Reed said. And, 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 uh, and I, I, you know, I include, I'll, I'll include it in my notes and I, 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 it's not long. I really encourage everyone to read it. it. It's a, it's a very interesting snapshot of, of what, what Reed was willing to commit to publicly. Um, and, but more importantly, it, what you see is you're seeing, um, you're seeing a kind of a doubling down, I would argue, in a way, um, with 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 this topic and read. And I I I'll be honest, personally, not what I was expecting. I, I was I was honestly expecting most of the UFO talk around Reed to be heavily suppressed after his death because they didn't they they want everyone to just focus on all the other things he did. Because I mean the guy had a huge lifetime in government. Very huge lifetime. And, you know, it, you know, his best friend, uh, reporter for KLAS Channel 8 TV, George Knapp, oh, so sorry, is, George. you know, obviously, uh, d- you know, very uh, disturbed by the passing of Harry Reid, although not, you know, not unexpected. Still, it always hurts when somebody you care for over a number of years and have worked with a number of years, you know, passes away. Yeah. Uh, has George Knapp said anything regarding this? Um, George Knapp was, uh, was was kind enough to uh, to to make a statement uh, to to Space Out Radio. He's kind enough to make a statement to a couple other people. He's been staying pretty mellow. He's been staying pretty, you know. I mean, for the most part, Knapp's not a you know a terribly you know he's he's a, he's a he's a proper Vegas gentleman. He he plays it pretty close to the chest in, in general. But um, but yeah, but he's um, uh, you know he's definitely um, uh, you know he's definitely feeling it. I mean, and and he he gave he gave you a really nice statement, and and you know I, I think that you know ultimately um, you know I mean not not to get too negative on the topic, but ultimately we would we should all be trying to see this through 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 George's eyes because um, it, it's always through a friend that 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 um, loss is felt most, and so um, you know we can look at him as a senator, we can look at him as a as a spokesperson or as a as a a, a freedom fighter for for disclosure and so forth, but at the end of it. Um, you know, he, he was, uh, he was important to a lot of people with that said, um, you know, I think that it's, it's important for us to kind of, um, how should we say, um, oh, well, I would just say, it, take advantage of, of, of the fact that this is playing out this way. And essentially, you know, we should all be forwarding this material around. We should all be sharing this information with others. This is all very, um, um, uh, steak and potatoes material that can be consumed by a very, very large audience. And, um, and it's, it's good stuff. It's good, it's good stuff to, to help people, you know, help, help people get a, get an idea of what's going on. Very true. Very true. And finally tonight, you have an update on the bill. I wish, uh, you know, I mean, essentially, you know, there's, there's no real new news about it. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming everything's moving through properly, but yeah, I, I, w- I wish there was more information on it, but, um, but, you know, essentially, you know, everyone's still very excited about it. You know, it's still very, you know, it's still coming to pass. There is some um, speculation that the um, that the uh, uh, cutting the ribbon cutting ceremony that was done the other day for the Space Force um, might somehow dovetail in um, in some way to to what's going on, that that somehow um, that somehow there might be some. Um, sympathetic office that gets stood up within that organization that, that would work as a counterpart to whatever Congress puts up. Um, I, you know, I read an article where, where someone was speculating on that. I didn't really consider it to be solid enough to really kind of report on heavily, but um, you know, it, there's definitely talk about that. And so, you know, ultimately um, in many ways, no news is good news um, because you know, we're not hearing any kind of pushback, but I think, you know, now what we really have is we have the rubber hits the road phase where now it's been signed and everyone's got to figure out, okay, well, what do we do? And that's why we're so lucky that, um, that Senator um, uh, uh, Gillibrand basically did such a, a great job writing that, 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 that verbiage in that a lot of it, at least in, in my limited opinion, is stuff that I, I could take and I could just, I mean, you could just go right to work. You know, I mean, it was all very well flushed out. Very true. And, and you know, the big thing is, we have to give it time to see how everything plays out right now. 
we have oh. no choice. You know, there's a lot of politics that is going to be played with this. And I don't think we've seen the end between the government versus the Pentagon on how this subject is going to be covered yeah. and the reports the are going to be taken. Yeah, the, 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 the individual, whoever this poor soul is who gets put in charge of this organization, uh, man or woman, they will not even know how well this is going to go for at least another four months. <laughs> right. Because, I mean, it, it's it, no one's going to know until they until they actually get the insider view of how they're going to get treated by everyone else. No, it, but that's what I'm saying is this is going to be the proverbial political tug of war with whoever yeah, oh, has yes. that, that position. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. And and you and you you could end up seeing some. Yeah. It, it, well, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Either the position will be fought over or it'll be it'll be or they'll, they'll try to kneecap it. But it's one of the reasons why the bill was so carefully written was that they tried really hard to plug every single, you know, hole and crack and and and, and fissure they could find. Um, and it was obviously done by someone who understands how the government works and understands that you you have to um, you know you have to have the premeditated um, defensive mechanisms for certain things that, that are common. Well, I hope for for the sake of anything else, man, that we end up seeing you know some sort of transparency on this. I'm not confident in that, John. I want to be confident. But it's not looking good, in my opinion. Well, way. yeah, I, I agree with that. But the one thing I would just add, j just to finish up, is that, is that the 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 difference now is that is that when that when that time frame comes up, whatever it is, um, four months or three months, whatever that time frame is for that first report. Now, if if the report isn't produced, we actually have a reason to go after them for it. Whereas before, there there was no there was there was nothing on them. There was no reason for them to tell us anything, right? And so now we have a law on the books that says they must do it. And so if they don't do it, we now have a legal reason to actually take them to court and force them to do it. And that's how real government gets sorted out. Yes, but we also got to remember, too, that there's a good chance that these reports are going to be as vanilla, if not more vanilla, than the DNI report that we saw back in mid or mid to late June of last year. I mean, there's a very good chance, John, that this is going to be absolutely nothing. It's easy to to throw out a report and a couple of swamp gases and a couple of hot air balloons. But hey, to look get here, look 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 here, Eeyore, right? The US government just put into bloody writing into a US legislative bill that UAPs that. are a real project. Would you just be a little bit happy for that? <laughs> no, John, I'm not trying to, I'm not <laughs> trying to downplay it. Don't get me wrong. I'm totally not trying to downplay it at all. Okay. I just don't have the confidence in, in that they are, that they have the, the best, uh, What's the best? Well, uh, well, it, it, it doesn't even matter if they, if they if they have the best interest of anyone at heart, right? It doesn't really matter Absolutely. because you're right. They're they're only ever going to release so much. They're all, the, if you really want the really raw stuff, if you really want the unfiltered information, it must come from private citizens. You hope. It, it must it must because anything you get from the government, no matter how hard they try, no matter how good their intentions are, no matter how how best foot they put forward everything you get from them is going to be manicured we haven't heard anything in a, in a few weeks from either luis elizondo or chris mellon regarding this subject correct yeah he, i i just saw that, that luis elizondo did an interview a couple of days ago that i haven't listened to yet but that's the first i've heard of him okay so what do you think the silence with them is? Is it just the holiday time? Is they're waiting for Congress to get back and DC to get back to work after the holidays? Or do you think that they are? Uh, oh, kind of well, okay. Well, okay. So this is, com this is 1000% speculation. Okay. But based on how I know how the system works, based on how I know how things go on. Um, if, if they are, if they are, if they are smart, which they are, um, the instant they heard that that bill was going to get signed by the president, they were both 
on a plane to DC trying to shore up and and premeditatively protect every single you know shot that gets fired because this program is the most vulnerable at its infancy and so th this is the period of time where you go in and you tr start shoring up your position and you start getting your resources and start getting your allies lined up and you start you know building your your fortifications because you know once once the, once the funding comes and once the rubber hits the road, man, it, it's 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 like it's like blood in the water with a bunch of sharks. And that's what we're seeing right now. Yep. You know, the, the question is, how, how long will the great divide last? John, we're going to say a big thank you to you for My a pleasure. wonderful uh, version of the new version of the unbiased UFO report.